Hello, everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. I'm calling this episode Relationship 102, not 101, because I already did that. And I focused on the element of deep empathy as a real key ingredient to making a relationship work. But this one I'm calling Relationship 102. So let's get down to some basics. There are three ways to be with somebody. One, have them come to where you are. Two, you go to where they are. Three, you both meet in some new place. So when you have like a narcissist and a people pleaser, that seems like a perfect match because the people pleaser will be where the narcissist is and the narcissist doesn't know anything other than where they are. And that can seem like a stable relationship or at least a long lasting one, but it's, it's skewed. You know, once that people pleaser person wakes up, they're not likely to keep wanting to do that. They'll recognize the imbalance of it. If you have two people pleasers, they will both try to be where the other is at. And that can look like it's stable. At least it's nicer. It's not so filled with turmoil. But also that one is very skewed. Uh, you know, that one is riddled with codependence. Everybody's trying to please the other person to be okay in their eyes. And so they will do what they want and, and that sort of a thing. So that's also skewed. If you have two alpha type people insisting that their way is right and insisting that the other person is wrong and needs to be where they are at, that is a, a relationship filled with turmoil. And I've seen people who have been together for 50 years and they're still having power struggles and they bicker. So that's not workable either. These are the elements that make it work. If people are curious, gracious, interested, then they will work out their own natural rhythms and have a flow between going to where one person is and where the other person is. And they will inevitably end up consistently moving into new territory for both of them. That's called being a learning relationship. That's the best. I know when I've experienced that in relationships that I've been in, it's the most satisfying because I'm not right. My partner's not right. We're both right and we're both wrong. And when we're learning together, it's the sweetest and the best. And to be curious, you know, to be curious. How come it is that way for you? What is it? Why does it mean that to you? What is it about your own experience that you've come to this conclusion that this is so important to you? That's the best. You could say it has therapeutic elements to it, but it's just the nicest. And graciousness really mean it's a factor that means neither right nor wrong, where it's like, okay, this is a relative thing. There isn't right and wrong. It's just different. Okay. So to recap, there's three ways to be with somebody. Have them be where you are. Two, go where they are. Three, you both meet in a new place. So be curious, be gracious, be kind, be interested, stay in love. That's what's going to make the flow work. And, you know, when I work with couples, I will give them my assessment of how I think where on the spectrum of this whole thing they are, and then help them get on the same team. Couples that are gracious together are on the same team. There is nothing that divides them, and there is nothing that uh, brings them together at anybody's expense. Okay, so thank you so much. I hope that's helpful because it's it's helpful for me. All right. Love you. Talk to you soon. Thank you.